Hello again, and welcome to this week's edition of our Wednesday Walkabout. My name is Steve Wright. I'm the Director of Horticulture and Curator here at Jenkins Arboretum. And today I would like to tell you about the various Pieris species and selections that grow in our garden, as well as a few that don't. As you can see, this Pieris behind me is in full bloom. Pieris as a group are among the first plants to bloom in the garden every year. And they usually bloom in early March to sort of early to mid April. Uh, and they start around the same time as winter aconite and snowdrops and so on. There are a couple of different common names for this species, one of them being Andromeda, which is a common name shared with some other plants as well. Uh, but one of the other common names for this is Lily of the Valley tree. And if you look closely at one of the flowers, you can see that it does somewhat resemble Lily of the Valley. Um, and it also has a, a light but sweet fragrance, also somewhat similar to Lily of the Valley. So, this particular plant is one of several large old specimens of Pieris japonica that we have growing at the Arboretum. And this is what we would call a straight species. That is, there, this was not selected for any interesting traits. Um, this is what the plant looks like if you were to see it growing wild. But we are going to go out into the garden and take a look at a handful of others that were selected for some interesting characteristics. And we're gonna start with my two favorites. So here we are with a selection of Pieris japonica called Mountain Fire. And at the moment, this doesn't look any different than the straight species Pieris japonica that we just saw. But within a few weeks, this will start putting on some new growth. And when it does, that new growth is going to flush out and be really intense, bright red, uh, which is how the plant got its, its cultivar name. So tucked in directly underneath Mountain Fire is this beautiful selection called Valley Valentine. Uh, and as you can see, it has these bright pink flowers, which is fairly unusual for PRS. Um, usually they're white, but there are other pink ones. There's one called Valley Rose. There's one called Dorothy Wyckoff, which is a little bit lighter. Um, there's one called Interstella, which we don't have currently in our collection, but we are going to be adding that later in the year. There is a selection in our garden that actually combines both of these traits, the pink flowers with the red new growth. And we're going to go and look at that next. So here we are at a selection called Katsura. And as you can see, it does have these light pink flowers. And when this flushes out new growth, it will also be red. But the red on this is a little bit deeper, a little bit darker. It's almost more like a wine red than the bright red of Mountain Fire. Um, obviously, it doesn't have any growth on it right now, but we can share a picture. So, so far, we've looked at four plants, and all of them are of a standard size. So Pieris tend to grow anywhere from 5 feet to 12 feet tall. But there are a lot of other selections that have been made as well for more com compact growth. Um, and if I look across the road here, I can actually see a few of them right now. So we're gonna go and take a look at the dwarf selections. So now we're here with a cultivar called Little Heath. This is one of several dwarf selections that have been made of Paris Japonica. Uh, and you can see it grows only to about two feet or so tall. This, these particular plants are actually in a fairly dark spot, so they don't flush out a lot of new growth, uh, and they don't flower very well in this space, but they still do grow. What's really interesting about these plants is that these are supposed to be variegated. Little Heath is a variegated selection, but what we actually see is a lot of reversion. So all of this green growth are just reversions back to a non-variegated state. But I was able to find this one branch that still has a little bit of variegation on it. So because of that, we're going to go ahead and include a, a photograph of what this plant would look like if it was growing a little bit more vigorously in a little bit more light. So there are other variegated forms of PRS. One is also a dwarf called Little Frosty. And then there's a standard size plant called Flaming Silver. Now I'm here with my personal favorite of the dwarf selections. This is a selection called Suzuki. And as you see, it has this really dense, really full growth habit, about two and a half feet tall. This plant's probably about 15 years old. Um, and this is also in a very dark spot. It's actually completely shaded out by a standard straight species, Pieris japonica above it. And yet it still gets this really nice growth habit. So it's certainly a, a winner in the garden. Because it doesn't get a lot of sun, it doesn't flower very well. So we'll show you a picture of what the flowers would look like on this plant. So up to this point, we have talked only about the Japanese Pyrus, Pyrus japonica. But what many people don't know is that there are actually a couple of native species of Pyrus as well. 
and I'm, I'm sitting here next to one of them. This is Pyrus filariofolia, or vine wiki. And this is a really unusual plant, especially for the genus, in that it, it stays fairly low, and, and it tends to form a ground cover. It sends out runners, and, and you'll see little pieces of it shooting up. It's also really unusual in that it's the only plant in the entire Ericaceae family that I'm aware of that acts as a vine as well. So that's why it's called vine wiki. So as I look at the branches of this pyrus, I can see that they have actually started to, pre to create vines that are growing just under the bark of this bald cypress tree. The other native species is called mountain pyrus, or pyrus floribunda. This is a species that grows wild in the southern Appalachians, uh, specifically in the cool mountainous regions of the southern Appalachians. Uh, it's, a, it's a much more delicate species. It has very exacting site requirements. Uh, it, it specifically needs very cool temperatures, very acidic soil, exceptional drainage, uh, and also need some protection from wind and from sun. Um, so it, it is pretty delicate, and we did at one time have a, a pretty nice specimen, but I actually pruned a small branch off of an adjacent plant just to give it a little bit more light and space to grow, and it died shortly afterwards. So it seems they do not like change either, but it's a very, very pretty plant, and so breeders have actually hybridized Japonica with Floribunda to create some really nice hybrids. And I'm standing here with one of those hybrids called Brower's Beauty. So what you, you'll notice about Brower's Beauty is that it has sort of horizontal flower panicles. So the, the Pyrus Japonica has dangling flower panicles. The Floribunda has upright flower panicles, as you can see in the pictures. Um, and then this one is sort of intermediate between the two. For something a little smaller, this is a hybrid called spring snow. So this is also a hybrid between Japonica and Floribunda. But what's interesting is you'll notice that it actually retained these upright flower panicles of Floribunda instead of having horizontal flower panicles like we saw with Brower's Beauty. So to finish, I would just like to tell you a little bit about a pest of Pyrus. It's a very common pest, um, and that is called the lace bug. And you can tell if you have lace bug by looking at the foliage and looking for these little yellow sort of stippling marks along the leaves. Lace bug, even though it is a fairly common pest, it's not a, a terribly destructive pest. It's not probably, it's probably not going to kill your plants, um, but it does cause some cosmetic damage and it can also cause, cause some loss of vigor with your plants. And if you look down here, you know, here's a really good example of a pretty heavy feeding on the Pyrus foliage. Well, thank you for joining me for this Pyrus presentation. As the gardens start waking up, I hope to see you soon.